Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Readwise Reader. It's a brand new Read It Later service in the vein of Pocket or Instapaper, and it's out today in public beta. So I wanted to get something out quickly to show you how the app works and some of the things that I really like about it. Um, I will say upfront that uh, I have been talking about Matter, which is a Read It Later service that's very similar to this <laughs> for about the past year on this channel, and I really like Matter. Now, coincidentally, Matter recently announced their pricing going forward starting in January of 2023, and it's no longer going to be free to use everything. You're gonna have to pay a subscription to start using some of the more advanced features. So I'm at a crossroads when it comes to Read It Later services. I don't like Instapaper and Pocket. They just don't work for me. I really like Matter, and I wanted to see what Readwise Reader was about as well, because Readwise Reader is paid. You can do a 30-day trial. You can do the beta right now. I don't think you have to pay for it. But if you wanna keep using it long-term, it is a subscription. So I wanna figure out which one is right for me. And so while I don't know what I'm going to do long-term yet, I do think there's some really cool stuff here that's making me think about, is Matter the right tool for me anymore? Is it this? There's a lot to think about. So let's jump into the video and I'll show you what's kinda of rad. Okay, so let's take a look at the app. I've got it loaded up on the web here. And the first thing that I really like about this is keyboard navigation. Now, keyboard navigation is not anything super new, but I can do basically everything from just the keyboard. So I can just navigate through my articles in the inbox. I can hit enter on one of them to bring up reader view. I can scroll through it with my arrow keys as well. So I'm able to go from paragraph to paragraph. Uh, if I wanted to highlight something, I could hit H and that highlights the paragraph for me. It includes images so I can see those in line. And like, this is just great. And once I'm done reading the article, I just hit E and it's gone, it's archived. And I can go on to the next with my keyboard as well. There's additionally a command palette. So command K on the website, of course, brings up every productivity tools, favorite thing, the command bar, and you can do all the things in here. Um, you can search for things and yeah, really, really nice. Really love how many things I can do from the keyboard. And I find it just a really nice reading experience, right? So I can go into it and just without kind of like moving my mouse, I don't have to scroll or like anything. I can just rest my hand on the down arrow on my keyboard and just navigate through. And it's all very smooth, very nice. I kind of love it. It's great. So that's the first thing I like. Keyboard navigation is excellent. Um, I also really like article summaries. So you may see over on the right, there are some just details about the article. And uh, so for example, this one shows um, a summary of something about uh, developer platforms are all about trust. Um, and then there's this kind of summary. And the summaries are sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, sometimes they're like literally the first article or first line of the article. Um, so they vary a little bit, but I do like having them there. And sometimes they're a good reminder, especially for things that I saved a while ago. What the heck was that? Um, so that's pretty nice. Related to this, so let's just like bring up this article. This is a 12 minute article. I can see over there in the details. It's about 3000 words. This is gonna be a chunk to read. So I can just read it obviously, but there's this other feature called ghost reader. So if I uh, bring up this and search for ghost reader, I can invoke the ghost reader. And that's gonna let me do a couple things with, I think they're using a GP or whatever that uh, chat thing that's making the rounds now. Um, and you can ask the document a question, you can summarize the doc, you can generate thought provoking questions based on it. Um, we're gonna do summarize the document. So again, this is a long article. Um, I'm probably going to read it because I like, um, you know, I saved it because I wanted to read it. But what it's doing now, you can see the little ghost icon down here in a couple seconds. It takes a few seconds, less than a minute. And every time I've done it before, there we go. Now it's created a note for the document with a summary of the article. Um, that's pretty good. So you can kind of like pause and read this if you'd like. I'm not going to read it here in the video, but it's pretty good a lot of the times. And if you kind of want just like the gist, this is pre a pretty nice way to get that. And if you want to learn more, you can obviously read the whole article. Um, but yeah, it's pretty rad how this works. Okay, now I have uh, Obsidian pulled up to show you the next feature I really like, which is syncing my highlights over to Obsidian, to Notion. Uh, there's a bunch of places that Readwise will sync your highlights to. Um, and I find this really useful for my blogging workflow. Um, but let's go ahead and just create a new highlight so I can show you it in action. Um, we'll go to this guy and duh, 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 duh. Uh, we'll just highlight, um, oops, uh, we'll highlight this paragraph. Uh, just for sake of example. So there we go. I've got a highlight. It adds it to my notebook um, over here as well. 
Um, but let's get that out of the way and bring Obsidian to the front. And if I go into my Obsidian preferences, uh, there is a community plugin, so you need to browse and search for um, Readwise. Uh, Readwise Official is what I'm using. There's also Readwise Community. Um, I haven't used that one, so I can't speak to it, but I do have Readwise Official, the official Readwise plugin installed. And if I go to the settings for that, it's pretty simple. You just click this button. It'll say like authenticate when you first install the plugin and it'll just open your browser and authenticate with your Readwise account. Um, and that's nice. Um, you can customize the formatting option. So actually if I hit that, it's gonna open uh, this Obsidian export page in uh, my Readwise account. And you can customize a ton of this. I've customized the uh, names of the file because I wanted to have the date um, of when I made the highlights so that it would sort nicely for me. Um, but you can customize the formatting of the thing that it saves. Like there's a ton here. So you can really customize it exactly how you want. Um, I just kind of have the default there. And then this is kind of the title I have. But that's not the important thing. Um, the important thing is I can, uh, you know, there's some, there's some Obsidian stuff in here that we're not going to get into. You can configure the resync frequency, manual one hour, 12 or 24 hours, and you can have it sync when Obsidian opens. I just saved a new highlight. Um, so let me go initiate the sync. It should sync and there it is. So we got uh, kind of all the information. Here's the highlight uh, that I put in there. If I had multiple highlights, it would be multiple bullet points here. Um, I can click here uh, to just go back to the highlight in Readwise, which is great. Um, it's just it's just really nice. I have the URL here. Uh, it's going to put the uh, the author's name in brackets, which will make them a backlink thing that I can click and find all my things with them. It's all really, really nice. So I personally find a lot of value in syncing these highlights over to Obsidian because that's where I do a lot of work. Um, but yeah, it's just really nice to have this. And again, if Obsidian is not your thing, they have equivalents for Notion and some other things that I don't know off the top of my head. So I'll put them on screen now. And the final thing I like is actually on my phone. So I can't show it to you on my uh, computer, uh, but basically there is a dictation feature that will dictate the article to you. If you just wanna listen along, um, there's two voices you can choose from. There's multiple speeds you can choose from. I think it sounds really nice in every speed. For the past decade, Netflix took advantage of persistently low interest rates and investors' desire for growth to fill its service with shows and movies for subscribers to binge. This massive spending spree upended the traditional media industry and forced the incumbent entertainment giants to chase the streaming model being pushed by Silicon Valley. Um, it's more reliable for me than the um, audio version of articles in Matter, which I also really like. And yeah, I think it's just really great. The big limitation right now is that this only works on uh, the mobile apps. It does not work on the web app, which is really unfortunate. I'd really like to have that there as well, but hopefully in time it'll come. So yeah, that was Readwise Reader, a quick look at some of the things I really like about it. And yeah, this is not a free service, so you are gonna have to pay for a Readwise account uh, which is $96 a year. That might be going up um, in the near future once this is out of beta. But yeah, it's $96 a year right now, which works out to $8 a month, which is coincidentally exactly the price that Matter, which is another read later service, is going to be starting in January. So I like both of these apps quite a bit, both of these services quite a bit. So I'm going to have to figure out which one is going to be for me. I don't really know yet, but I'm going to keep using both of them for the next month and see which one pulls me in more. And yeah, hopefully this video was helpful to give you an idea for how this works, and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.